Hello and welcome back to our class on textile finishing. So what are we going to do today? Let us see what we have done till now. What we have learnt about is the how soil repellency is achieved. Okay? So by treating with perfluorochemicals, finishing agents, one can achieve soil repellency, which actually means oily soil repellency. If it was only water based, silicon finishes were good enough, right? But when we want oil repellency, then we had to go in for the fluorochemical based finishing agents. But one interesting thing which was noticed in the last time that we were discussing that these fabrics do not release soil very easily. And again, when I talk about soil, we are more concerned about the oily soil. more hydrophobic, more hydrolyophilic. Okay. So, we have to make the surfaces as lyophobic as possible, but after doing that it was found that they do not release the soil easily. If the fabrics get dirty, then it is not easy to clean them. Okay. Why? Because the mechanism of oily soil release dependent is dependent on the aqueous detergent solution penetrating between the oily layer and the solid surface. So, that interface has to be penetrated, but because the fluorochemical fabrics do not like water at all, they repel even oil as we said, then the penetration does not take place very easily and so oily soil removal is an issue. So, we will continue this discussion further as to what we can do so that uh, the release uh, could take place in a better way. So, today we will talk a little more on soil release finishing. So, just to recall that we had the fluorochemicals which looked like this where this moiety was an important moiety which was responsible for the oil repellency. Some compounds like this we had used as part of the branch, fluorochemical branch which is the PFOA or a PFOS. And we did raise some questions and the questions were, if the interface energy of a surface in air is low, then what would be the energy or interface energy in water of the same surface? So, we said it is going to be high. We just talked what do we expect when we apply the fluorochemical the way just now we saw. They will repel oil, they will reduce the surface energy in air, but in water the surface energy will be high and therefore, release of soil may not be as easy.
Now this question also was raised, why does hydrophilic fabrics like cotton would release soil much easily, more easily compared to let us say polyester which becomes soiled as we keep on washing. And somewhere we were partly convinced that because the mechanism of removal involves penetration of an aqueous detergent layer, therefore hydrophilic fiber fabrics in this respect behave better compared to let us say polyester which is hydrophobic. So, we left at this point in the last discussion whether the fluorochemicals are good or we need to look at them from a different angle. And yes, what is the angle? Angle is can there be an alternate uh, chemical compound which could be considered the better soil release agent. So, if somebody asks this question, what is more important, is soil release or soil repellency? We would love repellency, no doubt about it. But as we mentioned, that in case the soil actually gets embedded by some mechanical force or action, like we talked about the mechanics clothing soil with grease, grease which contains particles also. What do we do then? We will be obviously very happy if the soil, soil is released from the garment after washing. That will be important to us. You get the point? Suppose we create a molecular architecture which helps in soil repellency and also in soil release. Well, that is the ideal thing that can happen. If someone just starts thinking about it, then what do I do? If I take silicon based, they make the thing hydrophobic. If you go to fluorochemical base, they make it more repellent, oil repellent also the fabric becomes. Then what do we do? How do we do the release part of it? Can we make such a molecule? Well, that is what the research always brings out. The interesting, beautiful, innovative effort was development of copolymers of two types of segments. One was a hydrophilic moiety along with a fluorochemical moiety. If they become the part of the same polymer, same compound, maybe something like this can happen. Now, what are we talking about? So, we would have a block copolymer of two types of compounds, a fluorochemical and a hydrophilic. What do we expect? We expect that this compound, let us say in a dry state we have a textile surface and we have our compound which has got a fluorochemical moiety and it also has a hydrophilic moiety which is generally dormant in a dry state. If suppose this kind of an environment we can create that the fluorochemical moiety which you really thought that something like 
C F two seven C H three C F three type of a things are projecting, projecting out like this. They will repel soil. So, they were called dual action. The other action would start happening only when you have immersed, submersed the fiber or a fabric in water. Let us say the aqueous solution. Okay. Now, what do we do then? If we go from here in a dry state, we will always find these are the moieties which are prominent and therefore, they participate in repellency, oil repellency. So, we are ok like the way the original fluorocarbons were working, they will be working. What happens when we do a wet state? Because we said other part is a compound which has hydrophilic segment, the other segment is hydrophilic segment. So, whenever there is an opportunity from anywhere it will attract water. If it attracts water, it will start swelling. So, let us say now in a wet state, the hydrophilic part swells because it is hydrophilic, it absorbs moisture, it absorbs moisture. But during this so called swelling part, the fluorochemical projections are non dominant now, they are disoriented and therefore, now you create a different situation altogether. So, that means in a wet state, you will always be able to find surfaces like this, which are going to be dominant. So, now the dominating portion is this. In the dry state, the dominating portions were fluorochemical moieties projecting outwards. In the wet state, the hydrophilic moieties predominate and therefore, the textile surface, let us say we are talking about the textile which has been treated with this type of a dual action fluorochemical agent will be more hydrophilic now and that would mean that in case we have this possibility that the detergent solution that is the aqueous detergent solution must penetrate between the layer of the oil and the surface, oil and the uh, textile surface which is finished textile surface. So, let us say in the case when we have a detergent solution now, what are we expecting is that before the penetration, and you had lot of oriented fluoro chemical moieties pointing outwards and 
let us say an oil based soil was deposited on this surface by some force okay like mechanics clothing we talked about by force the grease has been put inside but now when you put the same thing now in water what we will see is the hydrophilic part becomes predominant the fluorochemical part becomes less predominant becomes not so much oriented becomes let us say in a way disoriented. Now, this layer is actually going to be almost lifted because the hydrophilic portions have swollen. So, what has happened? Now, this is a hydrophilic portion. The hydrophilic portion and the oil layer are now in touch. So, the interface has changed. The interface has changed. Originally, the interface was with the hydrophobic type of material oleophobic type of material and the oil layer was there. So, this is the oil layer. The oil layer and now this oil layer has been pushed up by what? Because the swelling of the hydrophobic uh, sorry swelling of the hydrophilic segments and what is in contact? hydrophilic and oil. If this is what happens everywhere, then the oil does not like the hydrophilic substrate and so it will start rolling up now. The, the contact angle will slowly increase till the point it just rolls off the surface. So, the dual action fluorochemicals if the material or the, the, the product the molecule is designed in a manner that you have a hydrophobic oleophilic material followed by a hydrophilic material then this situation can be created where in the wet state you will be able to get hydrophilic surface outwards and the oil will be repelled. Interesting beautiful molecule. So, this way these type of chemicals can be soil we are talking about oily soil repellent as well as good release agents very smartly you have been able to solve the problem. So, you have a good repellency as well as good release smart materials. Now, the important part is what have we got? We have repellency can be achieved by paraffin derivatives and silicon finishes. Repellency to the oil can be done by the fluorochemical, but soil release in some sense therefore requires what does it require? it requires hydrophilicity on the surface. So, it is a very important thing to learn like we said the cotton fiber fabrics are hydrophilic therefore, soil release is easy. So, that is what we have learned for release hydrophilicity is a good idea because generally we are washing and in a hydro 
aquaphilic uh, environment which is the aqueous detergent solution. In this respect, the dual action fluorochemicals can work much, much better, right? So, while we are very happy about everything that we have seen, what is happening? A new problem has come. This is being discussed. So, we have solved one problem that from silicon to fluorochemical to dual action fluorochemical, we have solved problems of soil attraction so that we repel it and soil release became better. But now the question people started asking is, are these fluorochemicals ecologically friendly? That became a big question. You may have heard about somewhere ozone depletion in the environment became an important issue and therefore some of the refrigerants which were fluorochemical based refrigerants uh, were, are not used these days. But we are talking about polymers which are not free uh, chemicals which can just go somewhere else, they are reacted. But what they say is that anything that is reacted can be hydrolyzed, can break down into different compounds and you will get something else then. Then what do we do? If beautiful compounds which are doing exactly our function also get into this situation, the reason is very clear that anything which the nature did not have, was not synthesizing, cannot be very easily biodegraded and so there can be problems. What kind of problems? You remember this PFOA, perfluorooctanoic acid, these were the branches which were uh, let us say reacted to <coughs> on the main branch of acrylic polymer or polyurethane based polymers or chemicals of these type PFOS and there are other chemicals also branches which are used which are called the telomer, fluorotelomer alcohols, sometimes represent FTOH. They are the kind of branches which may be available on these large fluorochemical segments that we have. Even in dual, we will have these only. The segment in a dual action fluorochemical also will be similar along with something which is hydrophilic. But if there is a disc, you discard the, the material, either the chemical or the polymer or the textile, whenever you do, something can get released to the environment in the waterways, in any other way. And therefore, these higher FCs, now this higher FC means what? When we are talking about only hydrocarbons, we are looking at C16, C17, C18 type of things. When we are looking at the fluorochemicals, the C8 like octanoic acid was able to do your job. So, C8 type of things. So, they were able to get much better repellency with these compounds which were theoretically uh, shorter carbon chains. But from the environment point of view, even these C8 type of compounds are also called higher FCs. That means you are still looking at these molecules. If they get separated out and they get into waterways, there can be problems. That is why they are called higher because they may get, they are, if they are not water soluble, they dissociate, but they are not water soluble. If they are not water soluble, soluble then they can go into the intestines and everywhere from the animals or humans if they get consumed. So, they do not get washed out, they get stuck and so our systems can have problems. So, the impact was 
some of the studies obviously showed that tissues from animals or humans contained per fluorinated carboxylic acids which are considered as PFCAs. So, they were accumulating bioaccumulative these compounds are called the bioaccumulative compounds. So, that means with time instead of normally when someone ingests something it gets excreted out from the body after whatever actions physiological or the changes that we have it will comes out. Instead of if coming out if they remain within the body then obviously body cannot tolerate this for a long time so you will get problems. That is what people found that actually these were accumulating in the body tissues. So, that was a cause of concern and the PFACs can be represented like this. So, they basically all fluorine per fluoro compounds with an carboxylic end group. How do you get these end groups? Well, you may have used them as we said, we had used them in the thing or you may have used the other compounds like FTOH that is the tello, fluoro, telomers, alcohols they can also degrade and get into PFACAs. Okay. So, now you have these fluorochemicals actually in the environment could be in waterways after some dissociation from the main chain and they get stuck. Why do they get stuck? Well, they do get stuck they are found because they may not be water soluble. If they are not water soluble then they get stuck in the tissues and obviously this cannot be very nice to anyone. So, the fluorotelomer alcohols the one which people may be using or they may be getting out are called normally FTOH 8 is to 2 that is a representation for a moiety of this kind which is the perfluoromer which has got 8 carbon and the other is an alcohol kind of environment which is 2 carbon. So, it is called 8 is to 2 this is the normal way of course, these can get converted to acids as per the oxidation and so on and so forth. So, they will get into the perfluoro carboxylic acids which were found in the tissues. If suppose instead of this we have another telomer which is 4 is to 2 that means this part is 4 carbon which is the fluoro part and the other of course remain the same alcohol which uh, we can see. So, this is this now what are we trying to get at? we are trying to get at that if the fluorochemical moiety number of carbon in this moiety are reduced maybe it will help. How does it help? There has been a deliberate shift in the fluorochemical being used for purposes that we are talking about. Instead of using a C8 we use let us say C4 carbon right this kind of a compound 4 and 2. If you use this kinds of compounds then and if they get let us say dissociated and they get into waterways then what happens? So, there is a shift why there is a shift? The C4 compounds are more water soluble let us say how the aqueous solubility of short chain. So, we were talking about the higher FC that means C8 now short chain would mean let us say C4 
if it is a 4 2 kind of a situation the solubility has been found to be approximately 974 milligram per liter if you make it 6 is to 2 it is 18 around 18 milligrams per liter if you make it 10 is to 2 this is 0 0.006 so anything which is not water soluble cannot be good nature is not able to degrade very easily because these things never existed in nature we keep talking about polyethylene uh, and other non biodegradable polymers causing environmental issues because they did not exist in nature before so nature had not handled them maybe after about 50 years 100 years nature would know enough different kinds of enzymes which would degrade them also very easily the way they do let's say a cellulose so if solubility is very low then it will get stuck but if you say well we are now going into this type of a material then so much of this is soluble so if the possibility therefore of this compound getting out of the body will be much larger even if they have not degraded so they are not going to be absorbed in the tissues so we have an alternative that you have a fluorochemical moieties that you can use which will be C4 and not C8 life can be relatively easy but in case people say well we are not very very happy with any fluorochemicals which should not be as such then you may have to look for some other alternatives which are non fluoro compounds some compound and were also studied an aim what was the aim and objective objective still is that you make more soil release character you got to have the character of the surface as soil release that means more, more hydrophilic so if more hydrophilic is the answer then people said why are we looking at fluorochemical which are very very hydrophobic so some compounds like carboxy based compounds uh, were suggested for use along with the anti shrink durable press finish and it so happened that in one some studies it was also seen that normal cotton fabrics would release soil better than crease resistant fabrics why because based on what you have done if you have cross linked more then the hydrophilicity reduces hydrophobicity increases other than whatever happened all the good good ones good uh, improvement in properties we have seen but this thing also happens and they found they, they would have difficulty in release of soil the finished fabric so there were suggestions that you can use some hydrophilic agents along with it so one of them was a carboxy based polymer like CMC carboxy methyl cellulose what is this compound this compound is the cellulose all right you have primary hydroxyl groups which are obviously more reactive compared to the other secondary hydroxyl groups so this is as you remember has an alpha 1 4 linkage remember and hydroglucose linkage now if we change this to compound like this this becomes CMC
So, you have changed this primary hydroxyl group to this. Of course, when you want a sodium salt, then obviously you will have uh, the, the sodium salt of this, which will be in, in a way water soluble and then it can also react along with the durable press uh, compound, part of it may get cross-linked, this part, this would be the cross-linking agent with another cellulose molecule which actually is let us say cotton and so you will have a compound like this covalently bonded and therefore this would give enough hydrophilicity which may have been compromised after cross-linking. So you can get that. So these are the things which people had suggested for some other fiber, for other fibers compound like this because objective was you want the surfaces to be more hydrophilic. So, block copolymers of uh, this type of a compound which are carboxylic acid or esters of carboxylic acid together uh, would be able to give a polymer which will let us say not so much water soluble, but surface is hydrophilic and so soil release could be better. So, all this work is being done to improve the soil release. We can look at some other compounds also, things like smart compounds again formed, some polyester, polyether type of linkages if you can form. Then you will again have hydrophobic segment and hydrophilic segment and if that happens, the same mechanism which we thought we just learnt as a dual action fluorochemicals can be used. Are you getting the point? They can be used and so oily soil therefore can roll off. So, this is almost like a normal polyester you see that normal polyester this particular molecule looks like a normal polyester molecule. If suppose you add another moiety here which could be a moiety which has got a lot of hydroxyl based hydrophilic groups which are from coming from epoxy uh, groups polymerized. So, you will suddenly have a polyester polyether type of a situation which means more hydrophobic and hydrophilic segments. So, similar mechanisms can be uh, seen with these type of smart materials again. So, people are looking at possibilities of non-fluorine based compounds as well as fluorine based compounds which are short chain C4 type of compounds, all of them can give us relatively more repellency and more release. If somebody asks this question whether fluorochemicals will repel more or these type of polyester polyether compounds will repel more, well the answer is fluorochemicals, no doubt about that repel, but release they can do. So, if people are obviously saying let, let at the end of the day the fabric must be clean after washing, so these type of materials can do a job. Other interesting things that one can do which are simple, 
and aim again is to make surface more hydrophilic surface not the whole polymer not the whole fiber let's say polyester which is hydrophobic fine if you do saponification that means basically a treatment of polyester fiber fabrics let's say in alkaline solutions so what will happen on the surface the polyester molecule may hydrolyze generating carboxyl groups and hydroxyl groups true or not if a polyester that is the ester molecule is hydrolyzed in an alkaline situation on the surface limited treatment you will get good number of carboxyl and hydroxyl groups one can do this treatment and try to dye this polyester hmm, in basic dyes you will see that the cationic dyes can get attracted in a suitable ph obviously in acidic ph will be to polyester surfaces that is an indication that the surface has changed and if what is surface change as we said ester breaking up and giving you carboxyl and hydroxyl groups jetting out on the surface that means hydrophilic if hydrophilic is the surface then the chances are that your detergent solution aqueous detergent solutions will work and the soil e oily soil also will roll off well something similar people have done uh, using atmospheric plasma using gases like argon helium and so on and so forth so one can ensure that the surface becomes more wettable of the polyester synthetic we are not talking about cottons and silks and wool they are anyway hydrophilic so we have already agreed more or less that if the surfaces are hydrophilic the chances are soil release is going to be good and that's what is the approach now look at this saponification is a very simple treatment and this change will be permanent i mean these two groups like cannot react by themselves again and will remain hydrophilic more or less surface so soil repellency oil repellency water repellency they are all surface finishes so from the point of view of economy and ecology maybe simple treatments like saponification of uh, polyesters can do a wonders something similar can be done to the others of course finishers as we said can also be applied plasma can also create hydrophilic surfaces you put a drop of water on a plasma treated surface it will immediately spread but the rest of the material is still hydrophobic surface is hydrophilic that's what is required so evaluation well evaluation can be done uh, of the soil release properties so you do a standard soil it could be an oil a vegetable oil a certain amount of drop a certain amount of absorption time a certain amount of heat treatment and then a certain way you wash them and then see how much soil has been removed you know this is can be done by standards with normal optics or spectrophotometrically you can see the differences and find out whether soil release properties are good or not so good other thing so this test is there you can go and uh, read this test yourself other thing is if if the soil 
has been released once and it is in the detergent solution has come out whether it can uh, go back and deposit what is the possibility of the soil getting deposited back so there are tests which have been standard tests which have been uh, decided for this type of an activity as well so one can uh, check both these things the soil release property as well as soil redeposition potential of that whatever finish that you've done so we learned quite a lot right what have we learned so what is the soil resistant and soil release finishes we have talked about the fluoro compound fluorochemical compounds and their limitations we've talked about we've talked about dual action fluorochemicals c8 based fluorochemicals versus c4 based fluorochemicals the advantages thereof and other possible hydrophilic surfaces that can be achieved by either a polymer which is hydrophilic hydrophobic combinations or just changing the surface and making it more hydrophilic this all can lead to more and more soil release and when we talk about soil release we are obviously talking about oily soil release which is the most difficult soil to be removed all right next class we will talk about a different uh, subject which is flame retardant finishes till then have fun enjoy learning thank you